Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I am fortunate uh, this evening to have uh, some precious friends in the gallery, um, and uh, I uh, am grateful that they're here. Their commitment to pr protecting the unborn, the innocent, and uh, their pr uh, commitments just to America in general gives me great encouragement. Uh, my friends are Josh Decker and Rudolph Margraf, and I'm grateful that they are here. And, um, Mr. Speaker, sometimes uh, in the area in which we live, we can become very dispirited. But once in a while, a medical marvel comes along and revives us all. Recently, the Pediatrics Journal of the American Medical Association on the progress being made in saving the earliest babies born prematurely. In a, in a study conducted over five years in Cologne, Germany, the authors reviewed 106 cases of babies born from just under 22 weeks down to 20 weeks after fertilization. The authors found that with active prenatal and postnatal care, two-thirds of these extremely premature babies survived until they were discharged from the hospital. Now, Mr. Speaker, these are much higher percentages than other recent studies have shown. And they demonstrate what active care at what the authors call the border of viability can accomplish. Mr. Speaker, I would just ask the members of this body to consider and to absorb this encouraging and very enlightening news. This issue is real, Mr. Speaker, and it was torn from the abstract in my home state of Arizona recently when a 21-week-old baby, that's 21 weeks after fertilization, was born alive after surviving an abortion. This happened in a Phoenix abortion clinic, and unfortunately the baby was not transferred to the hospital in time, and the baby died. Mr. Speaker, if the American people knew how often tragedies like this occur, they would be so desperately outraged. I would call upon Democrats in the United States Senate to allow a vote on the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. That bill passed this body overwhelmingly months ago, and it protected these, the tiniest of our little brothers and sisters. Mr. Speaker, protecting born alive children is supported by 80 to 90 percent of the American people. And if the United States Senate has become so dysfunctional that they can't even pass a bill to give effective federal protection to innocent, born alive children, then maybe it's time to board up the doors and windows of this place and go home and hope the barbarians of this world will show more courage and mercy than we do. No wonder the American people are so fed up with the dysfunctional gridlock in the United States Senate. Mr. Speaker, we're talking about protecting our born alive little fellow human beings. The survival of these little babies is not a measure of their intrinsic and priceless value. It's a measure of our skill and will to help them live. And I just hope that we can remind ourselves of our profound responsibility before God and to our oath of office to protect these, the tiniest of our little brothers and sisters. Mr. Speaker, I truly hope the United States Senate will pass the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. It deserves a vote. Democrats should allow it to come to the floor, and the Senate leadership should have the courage to put it on the floor for a fair up or down vote. If it gets a vote, it will pass. We have not lost our humanity completely, but have we lost the courage to make sure that something like this gets a vote? There are a lot of little voices that we can't hear that I think would ask that question if they could. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the time, and I yield back tonight.